Gavin's very happy. <laughs> Hi, <laughs> I'm Gavin from How to Train Your Gavin, and I am doing a week long reader vlog, <laughs> a week long reading vlog of me reading all middle grades. Ah! <laughs> I saved it. This is why I'm so happy because I did a week long, I mean, to be fair, I did a reading vlog last week of me reading all the books, well, most of the books that I lost to during my Play or TBR Write game during the May edition. And um, while I did find some books that I liked in that vlog, it, there weren't exactly books that I wanted to read at that moment in time, apart from maybe one of them. But this week I get to read all of these and I'm so excited. I'm genuinely so excited so much. So yeah, that's what I'm going to be doing. I have a week off although saying that it is Monday and I've been off since Saturday and I think I go back to work on Sunday so I do I have about six days so I have six days to read all of these and I'm so excited I'll tell you what the books are but firstly I was going to try and fit in Tristan Strong Punches a Hole in the Sky by Kwame and Balia in this reading blog as well I don't think that's going to happen because I accidentally forgot that I have a live show for The Secret Garden by Francis Hodgson Burnett this Saturday which is the 15th of May and I still haven't read it. <laughs> so I need to read this one ASAP for the Touch of Whimsy Book Club which is hosted by Lexi from Alexandra Roslin and Kaylin from Kaylin Abridged and I'm joining them for the live show as well as Desi from Darling Desi and I'm so excited for this live show. I'm gonna get all dressed up, I'm gonna look like I'm at a proper tea party and it's gonna be fantastic. So I am reading The Secret Garden. So I'm gonna be fitting this one in. It has been on my TBR a couple of times and I just never managed to get round to it but this is the ride or die now. I have to read this this week so this is definitely a top priority so I'm going to be reading this one but I will also be reading four other books which were technically on my May TBR. This was on my April TBR and I didn't get around to it so hey, I've pushed it back a month that's fine but these were on my May TBR. I have Starfell 2 and 3 which are written by Dominic Valente and illustrated. Who was the illustrator? Oh illustrated by Sarah Warburton and this is book 2 which is Willow Moss and the Forgotten Tale and this is book 3 which is Willow Moss and the Vanished Kingdom. The Starfell series follows Willow Moss who is the youngest in a long line of witches and she has the ability to find lost things so in the very first book she found a lost day and then obviously a fairy tale goes missing and then a kingdom goes missing so she has to find them go on these wacky adventures these magical whimsical adventures to find these lost things so I'm really excited to read these I have them both on script too and the audiobooks are only like five hours long so what I might do is spend today reading these books I might have like a bit of a starfell day in just like read these books sit down read them give them the time and attention they deserve and then I've knocked out two books already in this reading vlog and then I might actually be able to fit in Tristan Strong so that would be awesome but I don't want to push myself I don't want to push myself and then of course I do need to read Secret Garden by Frances Hodgson Burnett I don't really know much about this one just other than it's a children's classic and there must be some kind of secret garden and then we have Fireborn by Ailing Fowler. This one is an art copy. It comes out on the 30th of September 2021. And the full title of this is actually Fireborn 12 and the Frozen Forest. Oh god, it just sounds so good, right? So I believe this one follows 12. And in her kind of village, I think a young girl goes missing and nobody wants to go find this young girl apart from 12. So 12 ends up venturing into the Frozen Forest to find this missing girl. And there's just like lots of magic. And, you know, it's a frozen forest. It's a, what more do you need? Once I've read this, I'll be able to explain what it is a bit better. And then we have Three Keys by Kelly Yang. And this one will be part of the Asian Readathon, which is hosted by With Cindy. And this one is the sequel to Front Desk, which is one of the books that I absolutely adored from the start of this year. And it follows Mia Tang, and she immigrates over from China to the United States of America, where her parents end up running a motel. And it's just, oh, I love the first book so, so much. I cannot wait to see where the story goes. It is contemporary, and usually I don't read a lot of contemporary, but this one just draws you in, it sucks you in, it's just, oh, it's sublime. So I'm excited to see where Mia goes next. So these are my plans for this reading vlog. I am off work, so I might have to make a trip into town or something and get myself some Starbucks, because, you know, a full week without a Java chip frappuccino is going to kill me. And other things I have planned this week are, I, I, I think I can say this because when this vlog goes up, it would have already happened. I would not have uploaded it yet though. I think I'm waiting until the 20th of May to upload it. But I'm doing an interview <laughs> with Cressida Cowell on Wednesday. I'm interviewing Cressida Cowell on Wednesday. How amazing is that? Honestly, I love Cressida Cowell so, so much. She wrote the How to Train Your Dragon books, which you can kind of see 
there. I've got some there. I mean, I've got a whole Crest of the Cow shelf, to be fair. Uh, and the Wizards of Wands books. And we are going to be talking about Never and Forever, which is the final book in the Wizards of Wands series. But it's going to be spoiler free. So if you haven't yet read the Wizards of Wands series, then that's absolutely fine. It'll be spoiler free. It's going to be awesome. But the fact that my channel name is How to Train Your Gavin, and she is the author of How to Train Your Dragon, it just, oh my gosh, like, isn't that such a meta moment? And honestly, I've seen Crest of the Cow speak at events before. I've seen interviews. I've seen the way she speaks on online and honestly she just sounds like such an incredible incredible woman and just so magical and amazing and honestly I just can't wait. I'm nervous, I'm very nervous but I just can't wait. So today I did also try to finalise some of the questions that I could send off in advance to the publisher just for approval and yeah so it's all on track to be pre-recorded on Wednesday so then I can upload it on hopefully Friday May 28th. Ah! pooping myself. I don't think there'll be like any cocktails or anything in this vlog. It's mostly going to be like cozy. I want this to be like a cozy middle grade reading vlog. Just enjoy my week off with you guys. With you guys. Welcome back to How to Train Your Gavin. I cannot believe I'm actually saying that in front of Cressa Lacal, the author of the How to Train Your Dragon series, which is what inspired my channel name. Like, this is magical. Thank you so much for joining me, Cressa. This is incredible. Absolute pleasure. And I'm completely thrilled that um, my books inspired your channel. How good is that? That's fantastic. Yeah, and uh, actually, I heard, an, I heard a rumour that when you were doing your How to Train Your Dragon books, that you were actually going to have Gavins instead of dragons. So I, I actually heard that. Like, is there any truth to that? Or Well, if you believe it's true, Gavin, who am I to say? <laughs> <laughs> so I did my interview with Cressida Cowell earlier today. I mean, as you can probably tell, I've got all my Crescent of Cal books still out. I need to put those away. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> it was amazing. It was so amazing. I had uh, an absolute blast. Oh, I love Cressida Cowell. I think she's amazing. I see her speak all the time in interviews or when she's doing events. And she just, she is that kind of person who talks and makes you believe in magic. And I just think like the interview I did with her was just incredible. I mean, not blow my own trumpet or anything, but I felt like we had such great discussions about the Wizards of One series and, you know, even some um, How to Train Your Dragon stuff in there as well. And it was just so cool. And I even said, like, at the start of the interview, I'll probably put in a clip, yeah. But I was like, I said, it's so amazing having the author of the book series that inspired my channel name. You know, it's just, uh, like, on my channel, like, How to Train Your Dragons author on How to Train Your Gavin's channel. It's just, uh, oh, gosh. So I'm still smiling from that. I just can't get over it. It was just so good. <laughs> That interview is going up on May 28th. I'm going to schedule that and everything. My patrons are going to get early access to it. it. But it's mainly because I have a live interview to do on May 21st. And then I'll put the Cressida Cal one on the Friday after. Because I do my interviews on a Friday. So I thought let's keep to schedule. And it'll be round about the time that Never and Forever comes out in paperback. Which is such a great book. Like I do love Never and Forever. Like I'm not reading it in this vlog. But I did read it last year when it came out. Like just before it came out. And it was uh, the best book in the series, the best book Cressida Cal has ever written, in my opinion. And it was just amazing. It was amazing. <sighs> So yeah, I'm supposed to talk about other stuff, really. <laughs> so I did some sprints with Ashley last night on Ashley's channel. It was so fun. I did quite a bit in sprints, mainly interview prep, but also I was reading too. But before I talk about what I read during those sprints, I will talk about the two books that I've already finished, and that is Starfell, Willow Moss and the Forgotten Tale, and Starfell, Willow Moss and the Vanished Kingdom. And I read these two back to back. I just, I had the audiobooks on, and the audiobooks were only like five hours long. 
long. So literally, I just finished like two books in five hours on like Monday night slash Tuesday morning. I was like, oh my god. So what the hell did I do Tuesday? I, I just had a ball. I had an absolute blast reading these books. Uh, this one, I think, well, I do think this one was really good, but this one was better than the second book, I believe, because this is all magical, and I do love the vibe of this world. It's a little bit like Pages and Core-esque for me, where it's like the kind of series that's almost like a palette cleanser. It's just so whimsical and immersive and you just can't help but get carried away in it and that is what this like series also feels like for me yeah I thought they were really good I mean I've given both four stars but I do think this one was better than this one mainly because I really enjoyed a new character that came into this one called Twist and I loved her introduction I loved like it, there were parts of this that was like a little bit more like scary, I like not scary, scary, but yeah, a little bit darker. And I just I love stuff like that. I absolutely adore stuff like that. Definitely still feels like a little bit on the younger side. So if you don't mind like a bit of younger fiction, then I do feel like these books would be perfect for you. I love the world building in this too. There were hints about this war that happened I think about a hundred years before and and there's just like lots of different things happening and yeah like I don't really have many opinions on it. Like I, I do really like the series but I'm just plodding along with it really and I am still looking forward to more. Like I hope there's more. Also I just absolutely love Oswin as well. Oswin's good. Oswin's probably my favourite character in this series. I'm glad I could knock out both of these in the first day of this vlog. Saying that though I am on day three and I feel like I'm falling back a little bit. Not much more I can say about it. Four stars. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Very bingeable series, this. After that, I did think I should probably start The Secret Garden, and I'm only on chapter six, but... Uh, this is quite painful. I'm doing this for that live show on Saturday and I kind of like DNF'd it for now during the sprints last night and then I ended up reading some Fireborn by Ailing Fowler. 40 pages into this and I'm enjoying it. I mean I can't really say much more about it now. I will talk about it later. But for the Secret Garden I had to take photos of certain pages because the main character is so racist. I understand that this is a product of its time. That behaviour was acceptable and the main character Mary, she is learning these bad habits of her parents or like her neglectful parents and people like in this book think it's okay to do all of that and it's a product of its time. Yeah it's a product of its time but honestly I hate it. I mean I haven't gotten to the actual plot of this book yet like I haven't gotten to the secret garden or anything like that but just Mary as a character oh my god like one of the worst characters I've ever read like she is a horrible horrible little girl and like I know I, I know a lot of this is because of her parents but it still it doesn't mean I have to like her I and I don't I genuinely don't and I had to research things because because when I was reading some of these like really like racist things that Mary was saying, like, and I can't even repeat what she's saying. I had I did take photos of like certain pages. When she was saying all of this, I was like, hang on, like this is acceptable to like be given to kids? And why haven't people like pointed that out before? I mean, people probably have, but like I just I've never seen people talk about the racism in this book, like ever. And it's just so glaringly abhorrent. Like it, it made my blood curdle. It just it was disgusting what Mary was doing. Mary is abusive as well. Mary is abusive and racist. And she is just a horrible, horrible little brat. So even, right, so I was like, I was talking to people about it. And they were saying, yeah, like, she becomes better at the end. Like, good for her. Good for her. But does she ever apologise? Does she, like, really rectify the racist stuff she was doing? And, like, the abuse that she put people through? Like... Is that ever rectified? Is that ever addressed? No, it's not. So this book, yes, it's a product of its time. As much as I hate that goddamn sentence, it's a product of its time, but that doesn't mean we should have to keep recommending this to kids. Like, fair enough if you want to read it, without it being a sort of window into the past. Yeah, that, uh, fair enough. But I feel like for children, like, I would not want my niece to read this. And that's not even getting anywhere near the ableism that I've heard happens in this book too. Like, I'm not even there yet. I don't know, I don't know what happens and I'm, I'm scared. But I wouldn't recommend this to kids. Like, even when I get to the garden stuff, I'm sure it does get better. I still wouldn't recommend it. Just based off the first, like, five, six chapters alone. I just would not recommend it to kids. Yeah, I'm gutted though because like it's a classic and I've found myself not really enjoying that many children's classics 
when I've been reading them, I've been finding them rather problematic, to be honest. And I'm just confused. <laughs> I'm confused, like, why? But you know what? It just reinforces, like, these books, the Starfell books, they had so much acceptance and there's like kind of like learning to accept other people, people who are different and it's like fantastic and amazing, I love it. And like the older books, they are not teaching kids the right things, I think. And like, let's keep this in the past, let's keep this in the past. Nobody, nobody really needs to read it these days. I mean, again, like, I, if you want to read it, fair enough. So I am going to continue so that I can give well-rounded thoughts, so that I know what comes up. And so if, you know, people say, oh yeah, but she gets better in the end, does that really matter? <laughs> does it matter if she gets better in the end because she's still racist? So yeah, when I'll finish it tonight. I will definitely finish it tonight. I've, I'm flying through it, even though I'm only six chapters in. I'm flying through it. So it's fine. But I am dying to finish this so that I can pick this back up because I'm enjoying Firebone so much, so far anyway. I'm so intrigued. I'm so intrigued. I really like... I'm not going to talk about it now, sorry. I'm not going to talk about it now. I will talk about it when I finish The Secret Garden. <laughs> so yeah, I'm going to go and I'm going to put on some ambience. I'm going to read some Secret Garden. And I have my Crescent Cal interview exporting at the minute. So just waiting for that to finish. And yeah, is there anything else I need to do? I need to prepare for more interviews than I'm doing soon. Soon, but I don't really want to think about that tonight. <laughs> no, no thanks. Okay, status update for you all. A few things since the last time we spoke. I finished The Secret God by Francis Hodgson Burnett. I will talk about it in a second. I am 161 pages into Fireborn by Ailing Fowler. I was hoping to at least be halfway through this by now because it is Friday, Friday afternoon, and I kind of wanted to finish it tonight, but again, I'm not going to give myself that time pressure because it'll make me not enjoy it as much. So if I don't finish it today, no harm, no foul. I could have read more of it last night, but instead, okay, so I, I don't know if you know all this about me, <laughs> but I have been writing my own middle grade since well, I mean, I've been planning it since, like, I think maybe, like, 2019, 2018. And I started writing it the day before lockdown last year. So it was, like, March March 2020. And since then, I've only written, like, 23,000 words. And I've only done, like, 10, 11 chapters so far. <laughs> I keep getting inspired to write. And then it takes months for me to start writing again. And, you know, all of this lost time, you know, I could have finished it by now if I wasn't just fanning it on. But last night, I felt rather inspired. I was in the middle of reading Fireborn, and I was like, I kind of just want to, I want to work on my own middle grade right now. So I started writing some of it last night, and I ended up finishing a chapter last night and a chapter today. So that was the end of part one, because I've got the book split into, like, parts. So I finally managed to finish part one, and I love it. Like, personally, it's like, I love it. Shall I tell you what it's about? Okay, let, let's tell you what it's about. So the working title so far is Enchanted Dominion. I've got no other name for it. That is a kernel name from the first Believathon, but also a name from a Kingdom Hearts world. And I just, I didn't know what else to call it. Nothing really magical really fit it because it is set in this vast enchanted land. Well, it's run by King Peter and Queen Aelith. They have a newborn son called Prince Ericus. And Ericus, he um, is born with these incredible powers, but the witches and the gargoyles of the Wildfire Mountains really want his power. So they send this like tornado towards the castle to pretty much kill the baby and steal his powers. So Selene the Sorceress, she ends up putting a protection spell on Prince Ericus and makes everybody think that he's dead and instead the queen dies. And for years and years and years, this protection spell on Ericus has kept him protected from the outside world. So when he's in the castle, people can see him, but when he's outside the castle, and he's not only at the castle, when he's outside the castle, he disappears to everyone. Nobody can see him. And, you know, it's on the eve of his 13th birthday, he escapes the castle with his talking cat, Cleo, and they go into the marketplace, they end up going to the cathedral, and they bump into this boy who can see him, and he is the first person ever outside the castle to be able to see him, so Ericus is like, why, why can he see me? Things happen, it is an LGBTQ plus middle grade, so this boy is called Bo, and they become best friends, because neither of them have had friends before, and it's like a very quick friendship, and they get really close, and then this event happens at 
at the ball at um, Prince Ericus's castle and Ericus is forced to flee and when he flees the castle the protection spell on him is broken and that means everybody can see him again including his enemies. So now I finished part one that's pretty much where part one ends and it's really to me it's really exciting and I love it so far. It's really hard to explain but I'm having so much fun writing it again and just like feeling that vision. You know okay guys just between us I put an extract on my Twitter earlier today and I had an agent message and asked to see it even though it's an unfinished manuscript I've only written like half of it. She really wanted to see it so I was like oh okay fair enough. I'll, I mean, no promises that it's anything good, but you know, I'll settle along. And then a senior editor from Scholastic emailed and said, oh, hey, I saw this and I'm really interested in giving it a read. And I was like, oh my gosh. Okay, so I have sent it off to both of them and I'm awaiting feedback. I don't think, you know, I don't think anything's going to come from it, but I'm excited. Even to just get some feedback and to just get somebody else reading it would just be phenomenal. Because I don't know if the plot's too convoluted. I don't know if it's appropriate for middle grade. I don't know if my writing style is right for middle grade. So I'm going to see. I'm going to see. Hopefully, fingers crossed, they give me positive feedback because then I can finish off the book. Anyway, that wasn't what this update was about. I want to instead talk about a giveaway for only my international viewers, okay? This is for my international viewers only. And that is because you cannot get this book, well, with this particular edition of this book, international. And I live in the UK. So it is Rainbow Grey by Laura Ellen Anderson. It's the book that I'm a character in. And the Waterstones exclusive edition of it has this sprayed edge. Now, I'm doing this event with Laura Ellen Anderson like in a couple of weeks and I'm so excited for it. It's £5 a ticket which anybody from anywhere across the globe can you know get and they can watch the event and everything but if you pay £10 for a ticket and it's UK only you will be able to get an edition of this book. Well the final pro product this is just proof but you'll get the final copy of Rainbow Grey with the sprayed edge but not just that okay you also get this bookmark and it's like really durable it's like a, a nice thick bookmark which is so cool but also a postcard too you get that with it too if you get the like the £10 option with you know the exclusive edition of the book the bookmark and the postcard and not just that but also signed so there's also like signed book plates for it as well that one's mine so what I really wanted to do because I felt bad because my international viewers wouldn't be able to get the £10 ticket option where they can get the book the exclusive edition of the book the bookmark and the postcard all of that they wouldn't be able to get so I was like you know what I want to do a giveaway for five international viewers where I will send them the exclusive edition of the book as well as a bookmark with it and a postcard so five international viewers this is for you guys and Laura Ellen Anderson was so amazing as well because I told her about it and she was like oh let me send you like the bookmarks and the postcards and some signed book plates as well so that my international viewers five international viewers because I don't think I'll be able to do more than that because you know postage and stuff but for those five viewers I will send off all of that so if you're interested please leave a comment down below and leave your social media link whether it's Twitter or Instagram somewhere where I can contact you leave a rainbow emoji and I will pick five winners by, okay, the event is May 27th, so by, say, like, June 10th, I don't know if that's, like, the end of a week or anything, but by June 10th, I will pick five international winners and send them off, no matter where you live, as long as it's international, like, so not UK international. I'm so sorry, my UK viewers. You can buy the book, it is available to the UK, but it's not available elsewhere, so that's why I really wanted to do it. Oh, and actually, there's also these postcards, too, which I totally forgot about. Okay, this is more like a print. So what I'm going to send is the exclusive edition of Rainbow Grey, when it comes out, a print which is I think what this is called it's a print a postcard with an illustration of Rainbow Grey and Nim the Cloud Cat on which is so so cool a signed book play as well and also the bookmark that's what I'll send so five winners leave a rainbow emoji in the comments and your social media link so that I can contact you and you're a winner so yeah so I just wanted to mention that because Laura also sent me this huge print for me and I was like oh Laura <laughs> Laura bless you uh so yeah I just I made up so yeah anyway I apologize back to the vlog in one hour and 20 minutes I'm doing a Netflix watch party with my patrons we are watching the Mitchells versus the Machines on Netflix we're doing a Netflix watch party I'm so excited I have my popcorn I have my sweets well you're resting on my sweets I've got all that Haribo from my birthday so I'm going to be you know watching that film with my 
patrons and it's gonna be great it's perfect for this reading vlog too because it's a family friendly animated movie Ah, oh, I'm so excited. So that is happening tonight. I won't finish Fireborn tonight, but I do want to get to around the 250 page mark. That'll be great. But before I talk about that, I will talk about The Secret Garden by Francis Hodgson Burnett. Really didn't like this book. I'm not gonna lie. I gave, I think I'm gonna give it like two stars. It might be a one star actually. I haven't put it through a core pile or anything. I feel like we should retire this book. Like I wouldn't feel comfortable giving it to my niece or nephews. I just wouldn't. And a lot of that comes from the fact that nobody corrects Mary's actions or words in this book. And obviously they wouldn't because it was acceptable in this book and in the times that it was written in. I understand that Mary Lennox does become a better character by the end and her friendship with Colin, who is like bed bound, their friendship, they do make each other better people. And I like to see their progression and uh, Mary become a better person by the end. But honestly, when you don't apologise for the horrible racist things that you say at the beginning, what's the point? And I know that wasn't ever going to happen in this book because these kind of actions were acceptable back then. So I just knew it wasn't going to happen. But if a child read this today and just thought it was okay to do that, then I would feel mortified by that. And I just don't think it's acceptable for kids to read these days, to be honest. I mean, there is that air of mystery and secrecy that I think as a kid is really exciting. And I, uh, because I hated the start so much, I couldn't get, well, ever get back into it thinking that this was a sort of like a magical kind of experience of discovering secrets. And, you know, I just... I never, never got back into this book. And then, yeah, like, don't even get me started on, like, the ableism in this as well. Like, when Colin can just, you know, suddenly shake off his disability and everything's right as rain again, like, no. Like, like, if I recommended this to a child who had any kind of disability and gave them this idea that there was something wrong with them in the first place and that you can only be happy when you shake off your disability, that is an appalling message to send to kids. I would feel awful, just awful if, you know, a child f ever felt that way about themselves, that there was something wrong with them, when there isn't anything wrong with them. And the problematic stuff is just so overwhelming that I just can't enjoy any other aspect of the story. It's just impossible. And I didn't want to drag the mood of this reading vlog down because I'm reading all magical kind of middle grade this week. Well, actually not magical because three Ks is contemporary, but like I'm reading like some kind of like really heartfelt middle grade this week. And this just didn't do it for me at all. And I'm having a huge problem with children's classics being the way they are. Like, and I, I again, I understand they were written way back when, when all of this crap was acceptable. But now, nowadays, like, we don't need it. We don't need it nowadays. I totally get it if this was like one of your childhood favorites. I totally get it, I do. But for me reading it as an adult, and I'd never read it before, all I can see is the glaring problems with it. The only good thing about it is that it's a gorgeous edition. Terrible book. So yeah, I am 161 pages into Fireborn and I am liking, I'm I am really liking it so far actually. I like the plot and the plot is moving quite fast. And I mean, I can't say too much about this because it's an arc and I don't want to spoil anything. And I like the characters enough. We follow 12 and she is very, well, she's very, she's a go-getter. She's very active and she can really handle herself. So there's like this kind of, I think I can say this, but there is like this attack on the village and at the lodge and a girl there, a young girl there is taken and 12 ends up going after this young girl and then she also goes with this big statue called Dog and I like their dynamic because Dog talks and Dog is kind of like a mental kind of character but I am feeling a little bit of disconnect with the world and the characters. I don't know what it is but I feel like I'm reading the story, but I'm not part of the story, if you know what I mean. Like, I'm enjoying the world, I'm enjoying the characters, I like what I'm saying, but I don't feel like part of it. I don't know why, but I do feel a little bit of disconnect from it. I don't know if maybe it's because there's a lot of darkness. Like, there hasn't really been any kind of light-hearted moments, really, so far. So it's been rather dark throughout so far, and I'm kind of waiting for something to make me feel like, ooh, I'd love to be part of this world, you know? Like, I'm not getting that right now. But I, again, I'm only 161 pages into this. It might change completely for the last half of this. And I might end up becoming so immersed in this book that I don't want to put it down. And that's the thing, like, I am enjoying it, but I'm not gravitating towards reading it, which is why I think last night and even today, I just started writing myself and I was like, I'm feeling like inspired to write, but I'm not like in a rush to pick it up again. I mean, I kind of am because I want to finish on time this week because I still have 
Three Keys by Kelly Yang to read. I, I like it. I do like this. If It's feeling like a low four star so far. It really does. So that is the update. I am going to Ikea tomorrow with my friend to help get a bookshelf for her. And I'm going to help set that up because, you know, I'm a bit of a handyman. So that's going to be really fun. We were going to go to Whitley Bay and go to the beach, but we've decided to change plans because, I mean, it's a big walk. It's a long, long walk that. So we thought better of it. <laughs> but yeah, I'm gonna go and get ready for this. Well, actually, I've still got like an hour. I'll read some more. Actually, I'll read some more Fireborn and then get set up for the Netflix watch party. I'm excited. Welcome to the Secret Garden live show and garden tea party. I have ginger peach tea. I'm just drinking water, but I do have a teacup. And I am drinking lavender chamomile tea. I have just peach snaps and lemonade because that's what I would take to a picnic. I'm a day late. And that's fine. <laughs> it's actually Monday now. I finished reading my books for the week yesterday, which, you know, it was Three Keys by Kelly Yang. This was the last book I needed to read. And I just read it all yesterday. It was such a quick, I mean, I'm not going to talk about it yet because I have Firebone to update you on as well because I did finish that a few days beforehand. But I just, I wasn't really feeling filming on Sunday. I filmed a Cottage Core Middle Grade recommendations video on Saturday night after the live show for the Touch of Whimsy Book Club, which, you know what, little bit of update for Secret Garden. I know I've already mentioned it and I gave my rating and stuff. I, I mean, I definitely still think this is problematic as f Oh, wait, I can't swear. I'll beep it out. And I still wouldn't recommend it to children. Um, but I think it's definitely one where the theme of growth and the way it ties into nature and how nature can heal. Like, yeah, it's done really well in this. I mentioned that in the Touch of Whimsy book club. It's still, it's unforgivable. Like, I hate, hate, hate the racism in this and the ableism in this. I hate it so much. And we were talking about it in the live show. And yeah, they mentioned about like growth and the themes and all of that. So yeah, I didn't mention mention any of that when I updated you guys like a few days ago on this book. Yeah, it definitely made me see a different perspective on those parts of the book because I was just focusing more on like the beginning of the book, especially with Mary and the way she would treat people. I didn't really touch upon themes and things. And yeah, it does themes really well. It's still nicely written. It's a classic or whatever, but I still, I still would not recommend it. Okay, it's still like two stars for me. I think it's, I still think there are way better children's books out there. There are a lot of books, children's books that were published in the last 10 years that does what this does so much better. Let this be something that maybe you study as an adult, maybe study as a teen, but like, if you read it with a child, like, please try and show them that the way Mary behaves, it's not okay. Like, I mean, I shouldn't be telling people that, but like, nobody talks about the secret garden and how racist and ableist it is. Like, nobody talks about it. I've not seen, I was looking on Goodreads as well. And like, what? So yeah, just like, be aware. That's all I'm saying about that. Fireborn then, I will update you on Fireborn. This one I did like, I gave it four stars. I do think that the world is just a little bit too bleak for me. And... It was like very adventurous and it can be very fast paced. There's like a lot of action. There's a lot of dark scenes and kind of scary kind of creatures as well. There are grims in this and that's quite like scary. But yeah, it just like I was hoping for a little, just a little bit more light in the darkness. There just wasn't that much. It like continued all the way through. There was just like this bleak tone. And I mean, I do like my dark middle grade, but I also like a bit of a balance. So it just, it didn't really do that 180 by the end of it, which I, what I was hoping for. I mean, there are like really nice moments and things to do with friendship. And it is really good. Like I, I, I think this might be the start of a series. I think. I hope anyway, because I would read more from this author. I would read more from the series. I just, I was hoping for something like a little bit more, like, I don't know. I don't know. But it was really good and I'm glad I read it. I honestly would love to point out like some specific things and like passages in this book, but it is an arc and that's not allowed. I'd get sacked. I mean, sacked from what? I get sacked from YouTube if I started to give you actual things from the book. Yeah, when it comes out, I mean, I think you guys might say it as well. I feel like I had like very high expectations for it and I just wasn't expecting how bleak it would be throughout. So I feel like hopefully with me having said that, 
that anybody who reads this with that mindset going into it, like, oh, this is going to be bleak from, like, all the way through, then maybe you, like, will love it more than I did. I mean, saying that, though, it's still four stars. It's still, like, a great rating. Yeah, I was just expecting something a little bit different, I think. But it still had the adventurous journey aspect of it, fast-paced action. It's, it is really good. So I would recommend it. I still would recommend it. But I'm glad I read it, even though it doesn't come out for ages. <laughs> and then finally, Three Ks by Kelly Yang. Oh, this was incredible. It was just as good as the first book, which was Front Desk. I hadn't run any of these through Copile yet, so I don't know what the ratings are. But this is feeling maybe like a, a 4.5, maybe potentially a 5 star actually, because I absolutely adore Mia. Like she is like a fantastic protagonist. She is so driven. Like she takes matters into her own hands. Like there is um, a lot to do with immigration in this and kids who are like affected by that. And she, 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 like Mia, she really goes for trying to make change and positive change. And it's not just like, I don't know, like she is the most driven main character I've ever read, not just in a middle grade book, but in any book. Like I seriously, like I wish I had her like strength and determination. And she just, oh, like I just love it. Oh my God, like the racism in this though. I was really feeling for Mia as well because she starts a new grade and she gets a teacher called Mrs. Welch. And I don't think it's really a spoiler, like, but Mrs. Welch, like, to begin with, she is awful. Like, she's horrible, and it's clear that she is favouring the white students over Mia. And, you know, Mia is Asian. But then, like, Mia, obviously being, like, th one of the best main characters in a middle grade, she starts to show Mrs. Welch, like, not even, like, on purpose to begin with, but, like, she starts showing Mrs. Welch, like, the error of her ways. And, like, that like the the change the the progression of that was so fascinating and i love to say that and just to say like how just like affecting positive change can really really help and just like the way you treat someone as well and the way that helps like this this butterfly effect of kind of action in this book that honestly like good deeds are rewarded with good deeds. Mia is just like the embodiment of that. There's something Mrs. Welsh says on page 46, like I don't know if I should say it out loud, but like there's something she says on page 46 that like I was shocked at, like it, it, I literally went, what? What did she just say? Like I said that out loud at that, I took a screenshot of, well I took a photo of the page because I was like, I'm not going to swear. I also love because Lupe is uh, Mia's friend and Lupe is an undocumented immigrant. And I love, I love this part. Like I want to read it out. It's on page 69. So Mia asks, what's it like to be undocumented? And Lupe replies, it's like being a pencil when everyone else is a pen. You worry you can be erased anytime. And it's just like, gosh, like the themes of this book and like just how real this book is. And this is a kind of book I would recommend. Not this crap. Not this. <laughs> this is what I would recommend for, for kids to read, to learn compassion and, and that your actions have consequences and to see things from different perspectives as well. Like, oh God, like I can't express how much I love. It's a five star. <laughs> I would say before it's like 4.5, no, it's a five star. Okay, this is a five star book. And the same with Front Desk, like seriously. Like the way this tackles issues, it's like so wholesome as well. And oh, and like Jason as well, who was like, oh, like there's just so much I could talk about this book, to be honest. Honest. and I don't feel like I should now because this is like a spoiler free vlog uh, but like I do love this series so if you have not yet read Front Desk or Three Keys and there's a new book as well coming there's a third book called Room to Dream it's coming out in September oh my god I cannot wait I cannot cannot wait to read it I just love Mia's adventures because I love fantasy like fantasy is my favourite so like I sometimes struggle with contemporaries but this one I just like I want to keep reading I want to keep finding out like what Mia's going to do next and how she's going to tackle things and oh god it's just so addicting and I just love it. I love it so much. Like, we, like, started off this weekly reading vlog with Starfell 2 and 3, which were awesome, and then we hit a bum and obviously we Garden, didn't we? And then Fireborn was really good, but didn't quite live up to my expectations, and we're ending with 3Ks, which I loved with my whole heart. Oh, God, this is so good. Anyway, there's, like, so much more that I just loved about this book. Oh, like, I, I, I would be talking about it forever, and, like, I need to edit this vlog as well, so... Oh, but that was so good. Is there anything else I can tell you about? Oh, guys, right, okay, so, right, that's book discussions out of the way. I have managed to, well, I wanted to wait to announce another interview I'm doing. This one's live, though, so when this vlog goes up, which uh, m might be Tuesday, uh, on Friday, May 21st, at 8pm BST, 3pm ET, I'm doing a live interview with Eden Royce, the author of Root Magic. 
I'm going to grab it. I'm doing an interview with this author, Eden Rice, Room Magic. This is one of my favourite books of the year so far. Like, literally, of anything, not just middle grade, but of anything, this is one of my faves. I read it back in February, obsessed. So I have that interview this Friday. And um, I'm just so excited. I am so excited. I will leave a link to it down in the description box. So if you can watch it live, please set a reminder. And you'll be reminded when we go live. If not, the link will still take you to the interview. So if you're watching this like in the future, then you'll be able to watch the interview. And I can't wait. I cannot wait. And then I also announced Abby Elphinstone as well. I'm interviewing Abby Elphinstone, but that one's going to be pre-recorded. And that's going to be going up on June 4th. I've got all the interviews. But I'm also trying really hard to get Jessica Townsend. But like, I've been emailing people for like the last month and it's a slow progress so I can't say anything but definite that that's going to happen yet but I'm trying trying so hard to get Jessica Townsend as well in June so anyway that is the update like for the like middle grade stuff and I don't think there's anything else middle grade wise what you can look forward to is I am rereading some of the Edge Chronicles books uh, some of them for the first time some of them are a reread such as the Twig Saga so Beyond the Deep Woods is a reread for me and I'm doing a week-long reading vlog like starting this week of reading the Edge Chronicles the Twig Saga so I did one for the Quint Saga and I can link that in the description box too if you want to check that out but I am reading the entire Edge Chronicles series but in sagas because they're split into different sagas so I'm onto the Twig Saga and I'm so excited because Beyond the Deep Woods is a childhood favourite of mine so rereading it as an adult I'm scared because usually when I reread things I don't think as highly of them anymore but also I'm really excited because I think it will be great I think it will and I'm excited for the vlog too so yeah anyway that is the this vlog anyway I just ramble 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 on but I hope it was good if you thought it was good please leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already and leave a comment let me know if you've read any of the books I talked about in this video Ooh, I would love to know and hopefully I will see you in the next video bye